Welcome. It's the 1st of September, 2022. This is Get Cash Maintenance, Google Summer of Code. So Rusha Cash, the first topic I'm aware of is we need to be sure everybody's okay with extending extending the end date a little bit. So was it, did you agree with John Mark on an amount and tell us more about it? Uh, first, I thought of discussing like what are the pending stuff, like what are the things which are still, uh, you know, pending things we have to work on. Uh, so, few of the things are first, uh, like the, the prefetch command isn't uh, working. Is it uh, like there is an issue for private repositories? So, that has to be fixed. And then uh, I need to write few tests. There are some pending tests in a uh, few, you know, uh, for functionalities, for some of the functionalities. And then the Java doc, the readme is pending and a blog post. So I think these are the pending stuff. I, yeah, I have. Okay, so let's, the prefetch, the prefetch one, I'm not sure how that one is going to be solvable. Thinking about the, the layering of things, you would have to somehow remember the credential ID that was used to access the cache. And, and that may actually not be what the administrator wants is they may say, hey, I don't want to grant, I don't want to have something that is remembering credentials of the cache. Uh, so for me, I'd say, Go ahead. Okay. We have, we, I was thinking of skipping the caches for, you know, not like uh, non prior, like for private repositories. Uh, but then I don't know how do we, how do I know it's a private repository or not? So, yeah, no, I think the, the answer there is pretty simple. Uh, if it, if the repository uses SSH protocol, it must okay. be private. All right, so if, if the repository protocol is SSH, you can't access it without an SSH key. Um, now is that, Rishab, help me, is that correct? Is that true? Can I, if I attempt to access a public GitHub repository with a, here, let me do a quick check just to be sure, but I think that's accurate. Yes, as far as I, from my experience as well, I mean, when I work with private repositories, it's always following the SSH protocol. And we have to set up our own, um, you have to share the keys, the certificate keys to be able to establish a connection. But that doesn't- I was, I was trying the, I, I was trying the HTTPS protocol and it says it's kind of expired on GitHub. They removed that, uh, you know, a password based authentication. Was, uh, well, out yeah, a... so, so the protocol is definitely not expired. HTTPS yes. is actually oh. somewhat, there, was, there were periods where GitHub said it was their preferred protocol because it's, there, there are elements of HTTPS that are much more scalable than SSH. And so for an organization like GitHub that wants to do massive scale delivery, HTTPS has much more known quantities in terms of how do you scale HTTPS connections and how do you scale HTTPS processing. But the specific use of the pass username password pair using your literal password from GitHub, yes, they correctly have deprecated that and said, stop doing that. What you do is instead yes. you generate a personal access token or some other form of credential and then use that instead. But, so but that again, could also be used. That could also be used for private repositories. Yes, oh. and, and in fact, that's it's a pretty common usage. But the problem then is now the 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 cache maintenance has to know what those credentials IDs are, and and it doesn't really have a context to obtain those credential IDs. So because it doesn't, I'd say. All right, prefetch, prefetch is, is ignored or cleanly skipped for private repositories. 
And if, if people come back and say, hey, I, want, I desperately want prefetch for, uh, for private repositories, it'll take some more design work because I don't, we would have to have some way of capturing which credential was used to create the cache, remember that, and then reuse that remembered information. Uh, so how, how do we uh, plan on uh, skipping it? Like, is there any way or mechanism where I could, you know, any command? I'd, uh, I'd try the request and when it fails, ignore the failure. Okay. Now, Rishab, any, does that seem reasonable to you? Just attempt it and let it fail? Yes, I mean, I, I also don't see any other, any other way. Because we can't determine if it's a private or a public repository. Um, so then all we have is a reactive measure. Can't be proactive. Yes. I agree. Okay. So that was one of, that is one of the major pending tasks. Uh, the other tasks I think are like uh, minute, like like uh, it is important, like the Java doc and updating the readme as well. Uh, and writing few tests, some tests, you know, I'm finding it difficult to write like the get legacy maintenance tests. Those, uh, uh, those um, I tried testing them, but I wasn't able to test that. So those are the pending stuff. Last week I've done a lot of work on improvising the UI, the table. So I spent a lot of time and effort thinking which data structure to go. So I think we can have a look at that if you want right now. Okay. So you want me to bring it up in in my Jenkins instance? Yeah, I I, I think yeah, I updated the root path as well of that XML file. So I think it should work. Okay. Well, so let's let's go get it then and I need to get right here. I'll just share my screen and we will capture it so that we can see, see all the steps. So sharing my screen now. And what you should see is, whoops, no, nope, that was not what I wanted. What you should see is the Git client plugin there. Let's go to ci.jenkins.io. And I'm going to grab the Git client plugin with your pull request. So that's pull request 862. Okay, so this is the one we need. And what we need is this file. And then we're going to go to my Jenkins controller. Okay, so Git client plugin from that build is being deployed now. All right, and now let's go get the Git plugin. Uh, last time, if you remember, we were scheduling a maintenance task every minute and every two minutes, and there were, uh, you know, one of the maintenance tasks wasn't running, right? I, I realized it was a bug, and that was the same bug which uh, I faced during the presentation. So, uh, that, uh, so actually, I created a global, you know, the calendar object, uh, and then... Uh, I have to, I had to check the date and time every time, right? Whenever I read the cron syntaxes, but then whenever I created the object, that was the only time I, you know, created that calendar object. So it was not created every single time. So that was the reason. Okay. And that, and that bug, as far as you know, is fixed. It's fixed. Yeah, it is fixed. Okay. Well, so let's, let's, do it. Let's see a, a demonstration for each other and see how it looks. 
Uh, also, the UI needs to be uh, a little more friendly, like a little help tags. What is GC? What is prefetch? Little, you know, those things uh, are kind of missing. Right. Hmm, interesting. Ah, okay, here we go. Starting now. Poor thing, it's got probably several thousand by now jobs. Okay, so first let's check to be sure that the plugins that we hoped would be installed have in fact been installed. Okay, so 312. RC 3250, and this one is 49.47. So 49.7 is 47 is correct. And the 3250 one, let's be doubly sure. Thirty-two fifty. Okay, so we have the expected versions. So now, if we look at Git maintenance, and here are the old definitions. No. Okay, so yeah. Which ones would we you can like? Dominate. Which uh, ones do you want me to Can we dominate the maintenance task? Sure. Terminated. Yeah, and uh, I think you already have a file, right? The maintenance XML file. I think. Do we have to delete that? because I updated the data structure within it. Ah, okay. So let's, let's go delete it then. Yeah, maintenance records.xml. Yes, yes. So that one, oh, you want me to just delete yeah. it? Okay, now now can we like refresh the page? So you're okay if I remove it? Yeah, you can. Okay, and now we want to do a save. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's it's fine. It's fine. Just refresh this page. Oh, just refresh it. Yes. Okay. So now we have no data uh, in this table. Uh, oh, right. Now, and now we uh, can you click on execute? So save and then execute, right? Okay, executing. So now every minute it should do commit graph, every two minutes a garbage minutes. collection, and every three an incremental repack. Uh, it wouldn't be exactly every three minutes because there would be a commit graph as well in the queue. Mm -hmm. So this is the data. And then if you click on expand. Uh, expand, oh, here. Uh, oh yeah so this in the next in the next uh maintenance task you would see those as well okay all right so now if i and interesting it shows 60 tasks okay this is current time this is current time Okay, so it went through, it has executed many very quickly. Commit graph, but it's not yet run any, oh, there it is. Now it's doing incremental repack. And you can click on the expand as well. You'll find that comment graph data and incremental. So here, basically I'm storing five, uh, you know, uh, sorry, uh, yeah five uh, 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 records for each maintenance task. So there would be around six, how much five that is? 25, I guess, 25 records for each cache. Uh, 
so this was what i was working on this took a lot of time you had to you know figure out how to get the data and all uh the repo name has to be updated uh, because this is this is the internal hash which is being used and so um, so will you provide additional data that is the the remote repository url or is that separate somehow oh uh, we, we could provide the remote i wasn't sure what do i do with that so i didn't uh, proceed with that but if you want like we can go ahead with uh, you know putting a remote url for me at least let, let's test with rishab but for me the repo name is helpful if i need to go into the directory however it's not helpful for me to know just the repo name when what i care about is for a particular remote repository how long did it take to perform its tasks okay so we've got commit graph so uh, rishikesh i mean the uh, expanding uh, uh, this feature so if i mm -hmm. if a particular task is executed on a uh, on a cache and if i expand i can see multiple tasks associated to that cache yeah so if if each uh, if each cache is having its associated history of all the tasks that are executed and why do we uh, why are we showing uh, why do we have this column called tasks there i mean um, uh, this yeah this one shows the latest task which has been executed on this uh, cache and when you expand it it shows you the history like the previous tasks which have been executed so then there is no entry for this cache which uh, has a task called in in incremental repack uh there would I be an entry do. within the table right uh, what i what i'm trying to say is that when, when incremental repack ran on this cache we would have mm. made an entry within this table right yeah uh that that is being put into the sub table right now so if you click on the expand right so for that cache uh, so if you click on that the uh, so the incremental repack would be stored here i mean my my point is that once incremental repack is being uh, is is running on this cache it would make another entry within this uh, the table right i mean i'm not talking yeah. about this sub table i'm talking about the larger table it would make an entry there as well yeah 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 when it ran it would make an entry there and when a new uh, maintenance task has been executed on that cache it would be replaced and this would be added into the sub table okay that entry doesn't exist now uh well i think it now that's it's actually here it is the so here we see four it just got a fourth entry for commit graph or a, so there's this one was there before this one was there before and i believe this is a brand new one or is it no i'm the other direction it's this one that's the new one so before we had only rows five two through five and this one has been added so if you observe right now if you refresh uh, i think we would have one more uh like can you you get incremental repack here okay because this is the latest maintenance task run on all the caches and that has also been added into the sub table so now if i search the table would i be able to find an entry for this cache with gc task in the main table are yes. you okay about the no 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 you had you have to go into the sub table to see the data for the previously executed maintenance task got it so once more than one task has been ran into the particular cache you would show the latest task within the main table and then within the sub table i would be able to see the history of that uh, particular yes. cache yes. oh. so that is why there is there are 56 entries then because with 56 entries i've got one 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 there are 56 cache subdirectories in my folder is that right yeah
Well, that's that's correct. Now, I'm a little surprised that you're bothering to do any work on the at TMP folders. Have you seen that they are? They tend to be long lived. Uh, I, I wasn't. I'm not sure about that because when I tried it, I didn't have any TMP directories. So. Ah, okay. I think they are empty uh, Git repositories. I'm not sure. They are. Oh, well, no. okay. One of them has something in it. Two, they are in fact mostly empty. Interesting. Okay. Um. Why, why are these directories created, these temporary directories? And I don't know the answer to that. I would assume something's happening in either pipeline execution that's causing them to be created or in cache, in, in the, the Git plugin cache, cache operations. But I don't know why, why they're being created. So this one, for instance, has a passphrase, has a password in it. I'm gonna move this off screen and see if I can read that file because that's an interesting piece of data. Okay, and now it's been removed. It only lives, oh no, 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 there it is. Hmm. Interest. So, uh, Rushikesh, if as a user I want to understand what is the kind of optimization uh, that the maintenance plugin has uh, performed there, I would have to hmm. go to the caches repository and just like uh, check the size of the repository, right? Like do a before yeah. and after. Yeah, if you, ex uh, Mark, can you expand? Uh, you know, uh, Certainly. Which one would you like expanded? Uh, any repo with, you know, a very large size. Okay. You can so, sort, yeah, you can sort it. So you if click you on sort the repo by size. repo size, here's an, okay, now that's, that's an interesting okay. choice of sort. Okay, wait. Uh, so basically, this is a string. I am not sure how is this. I think this is sorting it based on the first. Uh, okay, it's doing know. an alphabetic sort on the string. Yeah, not a yeah. not interpreting that. So so you'll remember that as a bug and. I'll take that. Yeah. Okay, so let's expand it. This adopt open JDK one, All right? Because it is seven hundred and fifty megabytes. Or let's expand this one. Hmm. Why is it not expanding? Okay, back here. Repo size, 750 megabytes. Okay, I'm not, I'm not getting it to expand. Okay, so let's sort by repo size or by name. Now if I expand, no. Okay, <laughs> that's strange. It's like I've lost the ability to click the expand. Oh no, that works. Hmm. Okay. So when we are sort, sorting, it's not expanding. Thank if you. I sort, then I can no longer expand. If I sort twice, now time for more testing. Mark, be a good tester. Okay, I can expand here without sorting. Now, if I sort by repo size, I can still expand. If I invert the sort of by repo size, it doesn't expand. Is, is, is that because so is that because it's non-zero? No, this one is 25 meg and this one is 160 meg. So I'm definitely able to expand them. And here we see a garbage collection that is non-zero. That's what, seven and a half seconds? Yeah. 
And here's an eight second garbage collection. Good. So the, the, the chevrons, the greater than symbols are number of times it's been run. So this, this thing will just keep growing. Oh, no, no, no. I, I uh, actually, I tried removing that thing, but that thing doesn't go. I don't know how do I remove that. That was nothing related to the size of the table. Oh, okay. So this is just a bug. Okay. Is that, that is just a bug. I tried removing it, but I couldn't remove it. Okay. So, yeah. And now this looks like you had to do your own table, your own create the table inside yes. the table. Yes, yes, so yes. Uli's or the, the data tables API doesn't have a concept of expandable rows? It has the thing, but then you have to insert your own HTML code into it. So I had inserted my own table uh, HTML into it and that's how I'm displaying it. I see, okay. So if I sort by repo size and now go here, let's go to 50 entries sorted by repo size. And so we're going to choose one that has 754 megabytes and it won't expand. So let's sort by repo name and it doesn't expand. Let's try refreshing the page. And now give me a hundred entries and there's adopt open JDK. Oh, but it still doesn't expand. Maybe that means that there's nothing to expand. Oh, uh, no, I, uh, did you sort it again or? Uh... Uh, I did not think that I had sorted it, but let's try this. So what I've done is I've, I just refreshed the page. So that should have stopped all sorting, right? Then yeah. I'm going to increase the number of entries to 100, okay. and that will bring it onto the page somewhere. There it is. And when I click expand, no action. It, uh, okay. Is it taking time to load that data? I'm not, Could be. I'm not sure. Mm. Let's see. If I turned on the debugging console, would I be able to see that? Like, can you go to the networks tab in the de debugging console? Sure, network. Okay. Oh. And, and now you want me to reload, page? reload the page? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Page reloaded. And, and as far as I can tell, I think it's done, right? This was the maintenance data, which, uh, like, uh, can you scroll down here and now expand? Okay. Now I have to position so I can get access. How do I do that? Oh, uh, you can move this, yeah. Debug, Just yeah. change that and now click expand. That worked. Oh, uh, there's nothing in the network. Oh. So, and it looks like it's doing that expand and contract entirely inside the web page. Uh, I don't see any request going, right? I don't see any here, right, on the yeah. on the performance tab. Now I could be wrong though. Mm. Uh, can we at least look into the uh, XML records file? Like yes. I think there we would know, right? Here we go. Uh, here, let's get a reasonable editor. Okay, so uh, that here work. we can search for that file. Uh, so that cache. Okay, so you want to look for the the specific cache that we were seeing that would not expand, except that they all seem to not expand. So if I just take one of them, like here, like this one. Okay, so here is one entry for it. 
Yeah, so this repo name would have maintenance data and inside that you would find comment graph. And then... Right, and, and we see the data here, but yeah. when I click exactly that, the expand isn't working, right? I think it could be a UI issue. Okay. Yeah, now if I refresh the page, then it's no longer on the page. So now if we refresh- uh, You can use a search. Yeah, you can use a search there. See, but even then row 11, mm -hmm. it's still expand is not active. Now, so, earlier uh, ones, it uh, is active. Uh, Interesting. So here, expand works. And here, uh, expand okay. works. But And here, for five megabyte repository, for 25 meg. So I think it's not working for page, uh, you know, pages after 10. So if you go into ah, that top no. left, yeah. Okay, so let's... So the most let's recent so if I, so, oh, okay. It's mo pages after 10 I in the know. original rendering. No, so yes. let's refresh the page. Set yes, it to the 50. Now, is there a way for me to, there's probably not a way for me to pass an argument to the page in the URL to tell it to give me 50 entries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that works on the first row. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Try that one. It expands and 11 and 12. 12 does not expand. 11 does not expand. 10 expands. So as you were suggesting, it may be that only the first 10 get expansion data. Oh. Okay. Now back to that, how is it be? Oh, it won't help us because the large repositories are not in the first 10, because, are they? Oh, yeah. We've got 754 megabytes, which is actually, that is a pretty large repository, but it's number, is it number 11 in the list right now? Although, wait a sec, that doesn't help us, right? Because this is actually not a cache managed by the Git caching system. That just happens to be a folder that I created in there as a hack, right? Oh, I, because yeah. all the folders that are managed by it should be git dash something. Hash, yeah. Right. All right, so Hrushikesh, in terms of the tasks yet to be performed, I think we also need to get a, we need to release a version of the Git client plugin with your with your API in it. Yeah. Oh. And in order to do that, it would be good to have Javadoc for those API entry points if you can, if you could take the time to create the Javadoc. Let's, let me look to see what it looks like now, or is it already docked? No, it's not. So if you can provide some Java doc for those, you don't have to Java doc the tests. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I didn't test the legacy ma Git maintenance because I was, uh, you know, uh, for a few version, uh, so basically the GC and the legacy Git maintenance works based on, you know, the uh, when it's required. So even if I trigger a GC, it's not a compulsory that it would run a GC. Uh, so basically based on uh, how optimized, so basically if the cache isn't optimized, then only it would run a GC. So I have no control over when I uh, can run a GC. So that's the reason why i wasn't able to test a gc the same thing for commit graphs as well uh, so basically in previous versions of uh, git uh, a commit graph is run only if it's uh, only after a gc is run so there is a configuration for you have to set a config file in the git a global config file to uh, you know 
uh, enable the commit graph. So if that isn't enabled, I have no control over the commit graph as well. Ah, okay. So, the, so, so yeah. then do you, you attempt to launch the commit graph command? And if it fails, just don't worry about it. Oh, uh, it, it would run. So basically what would happen when you run a commit graph, the thing command runs, uh, the, uh, would you tell underlying Git software runs it, but it doesn't performs any action. It will just exit like without throwing an error. Oh, okay. So, All right. So I won't even know if the commit graph has been run or not. Okay. So now tell me more about the choice to use auto for garbage collection. Was that based on an online recommendation? In the past, I've, I've biased away from auto myself just because I, if, I, if I run GC, I want it to run. Because we have discussed it uh, in the uh, you know, community bonding phase. And there I asked a question as well, like do we, uh, do we do a GC with an auto or a forced GC? You were like, uh, we would prefer going with an auto because it would be safe and we wouldn't disrupt the, you know, uh, caches on. Oh, Jenkins. right, right. Because auto does not acquire a hard lock on the repository. Is that right? Hey, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Right, thank you. Okay. So uh, here I've written the tests as well for all of them, except uh, uh, prefetch, except prefetch, mm -hmm. uh, and the legacy git maintenance. Very good. Okay. Well, so so the calling the legacy, I'm I'm not sure it. I, I'm not clear on the difficulty of calling the get the legacy maintenance. It seems like you certainly can call it. You may have, <clears throat> excuse me, you may have difficulty deciding if it was executed or not. But even there, there's this yeah. logger. So you could certainly check to see that the message was logged. Okay. Now, when we do a launch command, does it also log the command being launched? I would assume it does. Let's see, where is launch command? Or if it doesn't, you could always put write a message saying, hey, GC completed or something like that. Well, or search for executed successfully. Okay. I can search for the logs, right? Like in, oh, it would be in the logger. Uh, uh, well, so, object, so right? there, is, there is a listener in this, and I assume we are passing in the listener when we, or is the listener global here? Uh, the listener is being passed from the Git task listener. Okay, so, so do we have a listener in our tests? I don't see one immediately. Let me do a quick check. I mean, checking for a logged message is certainly not as good. Yes, we do. Okay. So we've got this null task listener that if you were to change it to instead of being a null task listener to use a, a real task listener, you could then assert the, that things were written to the, to the, the listener. Does, does, am I being clear? Do you understand I, I, what I'm I, No, I didn't get you. Exactly. Okay, so well, so what we've got is when this test, let's see, we're in Git client test, and this is the one where you're running the maintenance task test, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in this, we have a listener. Now, at the moment, it's null. So the, the, the logged output is going nowhere. You could change this, define a listener, 
and then use assertions on the contents of that listener. And I think you can find examples of that style of test already in the code. Let's see, how would we find it? Something like git grep. Um, assert dot star listener. Oh, well, it would help if we did like that. Has changes. Has changes. There we go. May, no, maybe I don't know. There it's polling the listener. Uh, Mark, um, it, wasn't there a way for us to get the builder, I mean, the job logs from the Jenkins instance? Yes. I remember that. Yeah, I, I, I wrote some tests where I had to um, assert certain logs, and I did that using the logs that are printed during a build. I was able to access that, and I don't remember if it was via listener or not. Right, right. At least that's what that's what I was. I thought I recalled that we had a way to ask the listener for the data, but I'm not. I'm not finding it on my initial search. So let's let's do some other searching. Let's go. Because there is definitely the. The poll of the listener has changes. Hmm. Okay, let's check it in the Git client. Maybe that's where it is. No, I don't. Okay, this one. Listener.getlogger. So I think this listener.getlogger will let you then um, read the contents of that were logged to the listener. I think. Okay. So for sure, at least it's worth your exploring. Okay. So listener dot get a listener is a, a object, right? In class. It is. Yeah. A listener is okay. a. So in this case, there's a. Let's see. Let's see if I can find the different types of listeners. Ah, it would help if I learned how to use regular expressions properly. Okay. Yeah, there it is. So I think the one we want is this log task listener. Because I believe Javadoc. Jenkins Javadoc log task listener has a way to get the logger and, the and then you can read type. from this stream. Okay. I think. Okay. 
Writer receives the output of the build. Yep. I, I think I'll have a look into it. At, at least it's worth it's worth an exploration. I, I can't promise yeah. that it will turn out the way I hope, but I thought that we had written tests already that know how to uh, know how to read from the build log and assert the contents of the build log. We have, I remember that I have written such tests, but I'm not able to find it. Okay, recording log handler to allow assertions on logging. So, so this is definitely one, and I'm pretty sure that it's used somewhere. Yes. Here we go. So let's check these two, the build data logging one. So what it does is it reconfigures the logging. So turns sets logging a certain way. In this case, it's not even using a listener, it's using a real logger. So this one, maybe that's what I was thinking of was, but in the worst case, you could do that as well, Hrushikesh, add log statements and assert the log statements. Okay. You know, say, hey, at fine level logging, I expect to get this. And then during normal operation, you're not doing fine level logging. And so it's okay. That, yeah, that makes sense. Oops, I wrong. think I. Okay. So back to the back to the tasks, or or I guess we had started this this conversation with, do we do you need extra time to be able to successfully complete, and and. Can we give the extra time? John Mark's answer to me was yes, we can give it within a, a limited amount. What's your sense? Do you will the extra time benefit you? Do you need it? Uh, I am not sure about it because uh, we have few pending tasks like our Java docs are there, and then the prefetch is left, and then writing these tests are left, and then yeah, every week a bug keeps popping up, so I'll have to, so I'm not sure about it, but I think it would be fine if we go with another extra week, like, uh, I think that would be enough, uh, sufficient is what I'm thinking. So one week sounds great to me. Rishab, are you okay with going one more week? One week so beyond have... this? How does that work with the evaluations that we have? I mean, would are there two types of evaluations then? Would we submit in the next round? No, no. As, as I understand it, they will allow us to extend the date and then we just submit one week later. And the, uh, the presentations that we give within the Jenkins community? So if Rushikesh would do the presentation um, potentially during during the, the that that period and that's okay yeah I, I don't have a problem yeah i don't have a problem if they're extremely bad now what i was trying to see is the timeline hmm. ah here we go 2022 pro program timeline so as listed by them the timeline is We will, we, the final week per this is scheduled September 5 through September 12. So two weeks away, right? Next is that, let's see, calendar. So next week would begin final week. And we could say, hey, we're going to extend. This is. Yeah, this, this would be final week. And, and I think what Rushikesh was saying is, could we take one more week, extend to September 9, 19? Mm -hmm. 
So Hrushikesh and Rishab, back to the two of you. Are you okay with doing a one week extension? Would you rather? Yeah. Okay. I would I I would have increased work commitments after mid September. That is fifteen September. So, but that shouldn't affect. Um, yeah, Rushikesh extending it for a week. I might not be able to join the last. Uh, I mean, the last week's meeting. But yeah, apart from that, it shouldn't be a problem. Yes. And I, I think that I think that is okay because I've got increasing pressure in about that same time as that's approaching the date for DevOps world. And I've got major oh. things that I'm delivering at DevOps world. So extending by one week is workable. Extending anything more than one week for me is not workable, but I think we could do one week and, and we'll just go from there. I don't feel nervous about what we've got, like, oh, we must have that week, but I think it would be a good thing for Prushikesh to have the week. Hmm. Because right now we are, I think we are in a good state, like uh, things are working as expected, but if we have that extra week, I think we could finish off better, you know, try, try to wrap up stuff in an even better way, try to fix all the, bu you know, fix all the bugs in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we're we're at a point now where it would be good for us to get a release of the Git plugin, of the Git client plugin, and the Git plugin out with the changes in it, so that we can say, "Hey, we're set." That would be that would be a, a for me. Next week is probably too fast for that because there are still some diagnose diagnostics that Fushikesh you've got to do. The following week, though, would be really good. Uh, so the also, week is there? Go ahead. Is there a way to write, uh, you know, Java docs like a, a easy a way? You know, is there a standard or something which I need to follow, like to write it? Uh, and, certainly, you'll see you'll see examples in the code of Java doc. So let's go look at it. So. Let's check this out. Oh, excuse me. All right. Okay, so for instance, let's look at something that would need Java Doc like. Would cron need Java doc? It's not really intended to be extended, right? We're not intending for somebody else to extend that. But git maintenance SCM, for instance. And here you could see the example Java doc in abstract git SCM source. Let's see if it's good or bad. Okay, so opening this. Okay, so it definitely does have Javadoc and you can see how it's described. It's got a, an opening, opening sentence that describes it, an at since that declares when the API was added. And in your case, you would give it a, a version number. You'd probably say at since to do and then mm -hmm. I'll insert that when we release it or was we're about to release it. So does that answer your question, Hrushikesh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'll get this, uh, what do you tell? Uh, I'll get the Java doc for the Git client plugin ready by this week. Uh, I'll also, uh, Try to integrate the prefetch. Uh, the prefetch is. I tried uh, looking into it, but I was facing some difficulties. But I'll 
try. Uh, you, last week you recommended using the git ls remote command if I'm not wrong to you know check whether it's a private repository or not. Oh, and you certainly can do that. Right. Yeah. That's good. Good idea. Git ls remote. If it fails, is Git ls remote is certainly much more lightweight than doing git fetch. It it, it it does much less work. So if ls remote fails, yeah, that's a very good idea. And uh, oh, what was the other thing? I'll try uh, even writing the tests for the Git legacy maintenance. Mm -hmm. So uh, this week we, uh, I think by this weekend, the Git client may, uh, plugin would be ready. And then uh, uh, I'd also try to checking at looking at the errors in the UI like the error which we have seen, right? The bugs. Uh, other than that, other than that, any UI changes which needs to be made, like the UI? I right. did not I did not see any, but the, the total experimenting I did was with the with what we've got now. So let's let's do some well, and I apologize, I'm running out of capacity. I I flew in from Alaska this morning on an airplane and I haven't slept yet. So I'm now approaching 20 hours awake. So, so I have to get a hard stop here pretty quickly. <laughs> Let's take a look at this before we're out of time. So the one worry was expand works there, but has these extra Chevron, the extra greater than characters. But then when I sort by repo size, the expand, oh, repo size. Hmm. As soon as it's, uh, <laughs> as long as it's the first 10 entries, it works. It appears yeah, it that, works. yeah, it appears it's, well, and, and then if I make it 100, it still doesn't expand anything beyond those first, oh no, interesting. So if they were in the first 10 before, then they expand. So I, I'll I'll see that. Uh, other than that, finally about the help help section. Uh, the help button is in work. I tried adding those. Uh, I thought I'll add some description and all, but I'm not sure if it, that would be clumsy kind of a thing. So, well, and and certainly I would love to have a help icon over here because users won't know what commit graph is or why they care. And GC, if we, we could call it garbage collection, they may know better what it is to see garbage collection than calling it GC. Okay. Any other topics we need to go over before we end today? Oh. I don't think, yeah, I think that's it. Those are the topics I wanted to discuss. All right. So do we do we need to meet again later this week? Or are you okay, Hushikesh, going forward? And we'll meet again next week, same day? Uh, I, I can, um, about that, I can send a message, right? If we need to meet, like, I'll yes. send a message and, yeah, and the getter. Absolutely. You bet. So, so for my, for my clarity, for me, as far as I can tell, the Git client plugin changes that you've made have been quite stable, right? Yeah. They, they, you haven't had to make any significant increment increases to the functionality there. So yeah. it's, it's, I think it's safe for you to market that it's no longer in draft and Add add a few a Java doc comment or two, and then then we're probably ready to release that. And I need to do a release of the Git client plugin anyway, because I need to release the. Here I'll show you what I need to release. I need to release Git J Git version five point thirteen point one. Oh, it's not even listed here. I've got to get the the change log up to date. So there's. There are a number of things pending in this Git client plugin that need to be released, including a new version of JGit. So your timing is good. Are you going to cover the legacy tests as well, uh, Rishikesh? 
Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work on the legacy test as well. Great. Anything else before we close for today? That's All right, then let's let's go ahead and oh oh I see Rishab, you had included a thing on how to assert content of content of yes. log so, messages. Uh, yeah, I saw that here uh, before we actually uh, write the test, it's setting up repositories, right? That this function, we are uh, creating a logger, uh, a task listener actually for the test. If you go to the setup repositories. Uh, function search for setup for okay functions. so setup okay yeah. here we go uh -huh. so for the for, for the first five lines if you see right this is essentially we're handling a log handler and then we're adding a listener and this is being used across the test i saw to assert and match messages uh, which are printed by the uh, you know associated functions Good. Okay. So this is something Hrishikesh that you could use as an example. Yeah. Great. All right. Any other topics we need to review? Not some, uh, again, uh, also, the, can you offload this, uh, the recording for the session so that yeah, I, can I will. Look at yeah, it. I'll. Yeah. As soon as we end here, I'll try to stay up long enough to see the recording through, and then I'll upload two of them because I didn't upload the one from two weeks ago either. All right. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.